This video is going to show you how to get the exotic sword quest. So after you get your legendary sword, you need to infuse it to 280 or above. And then you also need to make sure that all the bubbles are fully upgraded. Once you do that, you're going to go talk to, I believe I talked to Eris first. And then she's going to send you to Lord Shax. And you are going to get the quest. Let me find it here. A little lost. Right there. Sword Reforged. Honing the Edge. So you need to get 50 major kills. Easiest way to do that, or at least what I did, is I just went into strikes. That way, you know, maybe you get some blue ingrams to drop, maybe some legendaries, and you can also be, you know, leveling up your character while completing this quest. So that went pretty quick, really quick and easy. And then the next thing you need to do, you saw down there, is you need to get 25 PvP kills with the sword. Now you can use your sword hilt, and if you get kills with just the hilt, you don't need actual heavy ammo with the sword for the kills to count towards the quest. And I just did that. I just did a few games where you just run around with the hilt the whole time. I mean, you're not going to, probably more than likely, not going to go positive. So if you care about your KD, you might not want to do that. I did it, and it, you know, the quest did not take that long at all. As you see, it's basically the same as two hits with your melee if you're just doing the hilt and then obviously if you have heavy you can just go around and wreck people running around with the hilt was actually pretty fun i would suggest if you're going to do that strategy to stick close to teammates if you're not playing with any friends just make sure you got at least one or two teammates around because a lot of the time they're going to be able to weaken the enemy to where you're not going to hit have to hit them twice and also you know distract the enemy the enemy is going to be focused on more than just you and like I said just a little bit ago, this does not take that long to complete. And this is actually a fun part of the quest. It really is a blast running around with the hilt and actually getting kills. It's quite fun. But there is a part of this quest coming up that absolutely blows. So here you go. So I finish it. After you finish it, you just got to take it back to Lord Shax. And he's going to give you the next step in the quest, which is right here, which is to draw out and defeat Ekthar, Sword of Oryx, and the Asylum on the Dreadnought. So all you do is you go to patrol, just follow my path right now, you're cutting straight, just head straight for the mausoleum, you're cutting through all this BS, all the cabal and everything like that. Now the asylum you cannot actually access technically in patrol, you're going to have to do something special which I'll show you here in a second. It's an area you access in the sunless cell strike. Oh and there's actually a calcified fragment back there, I've already grabbed it so it's not showing up, but there's one behind that gate, so come pick it up if you haven't already. So basically what you're going to have to do, there's going to be three knights. There's going to be a solar knight, an arc knight, and a void knight. There's three swords, three knights, you get the gist. So you're going to have to kill them really quickly. This took me two attempts to do. The first attempt, I guess I didn't kill them quick enough. But I, basically you're going to kill the three guys, and then you're going to stand at the far door, and it's going to open, and it's going to lead you to the asylum. So there's going to be a bunch of acolytes and crap. Just just take out these bums. I'm going to fast forward again. So all I did is I just took all three knights low. Well, I first cleared out all the stupid acolytes. They're annoying. You take out you take all three knights low and then I used my super. So Titans, I'd use the Thor hammer. I know that's probably not what it's called, but that's what I call it. And then Warlocks, I would probably use your uh, Sith Lord electricity abilities. So you'll see here I have all three low, I take one out with the sword and I pop golden gun. This guy's hiding, I thought maybe I wouldn't have been able to do it quick enough. But again, it took, took me two attempts to do it. And you see here, you'll hear a little noise and the doors will begin to open. And you've been granted access to the asylum. So we're going to go super duper fast forward here just so you don't have to watch me run through all this crap. Once you get to the asylum, you see the guy in the way back there. You're going to have to use your sword to take his shield down and then you can use any type of weapon you want to take him out. Again, I'm going to super fast forward here guys just so you don't have to watch me kill these enemies. There's going to be a few wizards, uh, you know, a couple ultra cursed thralls and just a bunch of acolytes. Nothing too drastic. I mean, nothing that's going to be too overwhelming. And if you want to, you can have another buddy come in here with you. He's not really that super overpowered, the guy you actually have to kill. Though, you know, if you're a lower light level, he might be pretty tough for you to kill. I believe in this video I am a 291. I could be wrong. So you see at first I was shooting him and he was immune. So I was like, okay, you probably have to take out your sword. A couple sword hits will take his uh, shield down and then you can use whatever you want to to injure him. And you see him. He's doing quite a bit of damage to me, but again, I was about 291 in this video, so he wasn't too much to handle. If you were a lower level, I would definitely suggest having a buddy or two come in here with you. So once you take out this jabroni, I thought the quest line was going to be over. Nope. 
So you take about the Lord Shacks, and this is the worst part of this quest. This thing takes forever. For all the people that aren't day one Destiny players, you're you know year two Destiny player. This is your glimpse into how big of a grind this game used to be. This part absolutely blows. At first, I said, "Oh, I only got to get ten materials and kill some enemies. That's not going to be hard. That's going to go super quick." Nope. Not quick at all. So I have a solar sword. I had to gather helium filaments on the moon. And if I remember correctly, the void sword is relic iron. That's Mars. And the arc sword is spin metal. That's Earth. If you are doing the collecting on Mars for the void relic iron, I would suggest once you spawn in, you go to the right. And the first new area you go to on the right, the huge base where the Vex and Cabal are fighting, you make the big loop in that area. I'm sure majority of you know what I'm talking about. For Earth and Spin Metal, I would go to the Rocket Yard. That is the area where you spawn in for the Septus Prime Strike. And if you're doing the moon like I am in this video, just stay in the first initial area and you're going to make the big loop in here. And you see here, this is what you're trying to get. A Soliton Flare. There is no rhyme or reason to grabbing these. I got my first Soliton Flare after gathering 24 Helium Filaments, okay? That was on the shorter end. There was one time where I went 40 helium filaments without, without getting one. And then there was another time where I got one after 10 helium filaments. Again, it's a total crapshoot. I hope that you have better luck than I do because this took for fucking ever. I mean, I'm talking like two hours to farm the materials. And you see here, I finally get my 10th soliton flare. And I'm so juiced and drained. It took 250. 50 helium filaments to get 10 soliton flares and that's only half of this step then you have to go and get solar ability kills or arc ability kills or void ability kills and it's just ability kills no guns nah -uh. just your super your grenade and your melee this took forever i want to say i probably killed 400 enemies maybe it was a few hundred that's what I felt like with your abilities just to get this to 100% now where I went I don't know if it's the best area to go I just went there because there's a ton of enemies and they spawn regularly there is no delay in spawn unless you push up into one of their spawning points but I mean it's just continuous they keep spawning on top of keep spawning on top of keep spawning just go to Venus, follow my path if you want to do this. If you know a better spot, then go do that. Or you find a better strategy for charging your abilities quickly and killing enemies, then go ahead and do that. This is just what I did. And if you're lucky enough, like I was, to have a primary or any gun with Army of One on, I would definitely put that gun on, even if it drops your light level. It's going to help charge your abilities quicker, your grenade and melee. And that's just going to allow you to get this piece of garbage bounty done. I mean, dude, I'm just mentally drained even thinking about this again. So you saw there, I was at 99%, and I'm just, oh, I'm giving myself the biggest pep talk. Just come on, a few more enemies, don't miss shots, we're finally done. This was the worst bounty I've ever done in my life. By far, in a way, the worst bounty. This thing took for, it took all day. This thing sucked. So after you're done with this, you're still not even done. You think you would be, but you're not. You go back to Lord Shacks. You turn it in, and lo and behold, you have to wait until Arms Day for Arms Day materials. I did this on like Monday or something like that. So you have to, you had to wait a couple days, which is totally fine by me, because I thought I was going to be done. Nope, you're not done. So once you get to Wednesday, the Arms Day materials will go to Lord Shax. You're going to report to Lord Shax, and then you have to do a special Sunless Cell strike. Okay? And it is tough. It's 300 light level recommended. I'm a 295 light level when I did this this morning with a friend. Now, the difference with this is along with the boss, there are going to be three knights that spawn. There's going to be an arc knight, a solar knight, and a void knight. You will get match made with other people that are trying to get the same sword as you. There is matchmaking for it, so there's there. That's, that's a good thing, at least for the old thorn bounty. For that special strike, there wasn't matchmaking. You're in there by yourself, and I remember doing that before Gallahorn and Icebreaker, and that thing was a pain in the ass. This is kind of a pain in the ass too, but not as bad as that when you didn't have any guns. So I was 295, and I'm playing with one other buddy. He was 295 as well, and the person that got matchmade with us was 295 as well. 
and you know we didn't have to start the boss fight over and I don't know if we had to start over at all so I would say probably about two if you're like 290 light and you're running with two other people that are 290 I think you should be fine so you see here there's the Ark Knight neither one of us in here needed the Ark Knight so we just killed him you kill him right away so for the bounty though for the last step this is the last step I promise you this seems like this bounty is never ending but this is the last step you have to kill the knight specific to your sword and then you have to kill the boss within a 30 second time window pretty straightforward guys work on taking the boss down and work on taking your knight super duper low again we did not need the arc knight so we just went ahead and killed him the second knight that spawns is the void knight and he is a boomer the arc knight's a sword guy so he's really not that annoying the Void guy is a boomer, and the Solar guy, the guy that I had to kill, shoots out like those flame cannons and has the flames all over the floor, so he's kind of a pain in the ass. I'm skipping ahead in the video here. You see we're working the boss down. He's, he's pretty low, and my friend, he has a Void Sword, which I would not suggest doing. I, I don't know. It's just tough when you have to keep two knights alive, especially if maybe you and two other friends, you all have a different sword it's going to be incredibly hard to keep all three knights low without killing them and kill the boss in time you saw there I accidentally killed my friends so we had to run it again after we beat it for me which is kind of annoying but I died here and they're working on taking the solar knight out well actually I'm getting revived by our random teammate thank you for the revive but you see here there's the solar knight and we're working on taking him out this is the guy that I had to kill and then kill the boss in a 30 second time window I'm getting wrecked by the boss. This boss is ridiculous. But a fun strike, I will say. This is a fun strike. I actually enjoyed this strike. So my teammates, they're killing him for me. I just get a front row view because I'm dead just hanging out, sipping a Mai Tai. And they're going to kill him here any second. Any second, he's bound to die. There we go. He's dead. The bounty is finally over. This thing took forever. Once you do that, going back to your main man, Lord Shax, again and you finally get your exotic sword whichever it may be this is the solar one the raised lighter and I was worried about losing your legendary sword you do not lose your legendary sword the exotic one does not replace it which is really really nice because you're not always gonna wanna rock your exotic sword you're a lot of times you're maybe gonna wanna rock your legendary sword You see the perks here and it does add a strike which I thought the exotic would so you get a R2 strike for the solar weapon, it is an uppercut, which you will see here in a second. For the void, which I have a clip of for my friend, you kind of have a void turnaround 360 strike. And then for the arc sword, my friend told me that it is a like chain of lightning. I don't know. I have not seen it. I don't pay attention to Destiny stuff. But let's go check this new exotic bad boy out in action. Here's the R2 strike, the uppercut. And this thing wrecks. It does use more of your heavy though. It uses five heavy swings for every heavy hit you do. Whereas the R1 is just one swing. So just plan accordingly if you're running around with that heavy sword. And then here's a clip of the Void Swords. Little special R2 move. Kind of a 360 slash hit. Pretty awesome if you're you know surrounded by enemies. But anyway, that's the quest. I hope this video guide was helpful and it allows you to quickly... I don't even want to say that word with this quest. It took so damn long. But hopefully you guys enjoy the video and it helps you out. Have a good one. See ya.